From the olden days, rain-fed agriculture has been the main driver of Kenya's economy. In recent years, however, climate change has caused catastrophic losses, putting people's health, livelihoods and well-being in danger. Ironically, the largest contributor to the nation's greenhouse gas emissions is agriculture, primarily livestock farming. <laughs> Only revolutionary initiatives will work to address the complex problems caused by climate change. With this realization, the Kenya Climate Smart Agriculture Project KSAP sponsored research across two of its components. These sponsorships were offered to staff and interns of key KSAP project implementing agencies and national agricultural research institutions. When we sat together and we identified these training needs, we categorized them into long-term training and short-term training. Long-term training required the officers to be enrolled into masters and PhD well, our short, short term was just to retool their skills in, within a week, a month, and a maximum of uh, three months. <laughs> Under Component 2, the project sponsored the development and promotion of climate smart agriculture technologies, innovations, and management practices related to five thematic areas climate smart crops climate smart livestock and aquaculture, socio-economic research, sustainable land, water and agroforestry, and sustainable bioenergy. Our aim was to strengthen the technical and institutional capacity of the national agricultural systems. And this includes the research systems cutting across Calro, Kemfri, and the universities. For example, we have plant breeding, uh, we have animal breeding, we have issues dealing with the socioeconomics and the data uh, management, uh, as well as also issues touching on specific uh, technologies, innovations and management practices that needs to be upscaled. Ruth from the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, is one of the beneficiaries sponsored for her PhD studies. Her research contributed towards increasing dairy goat production through analysis of genetic and economic aspects in Kenyan breeding programs. Like if you have uh, one cow, you can keep five dairy goats instead of keeping one cow. So every farmer can be able to afford a goat. And because of this large size, the, the demarcation and the, the, the last sites are becoming smaller and smaller. So most of the farmers would like to have cows which feeds more. So that suits the, the dairy goods production now. And also it's easy to sell and the milk production, as much as it's small, it's little, but the nutrients of that milk is littered high than, that, than the cow milk. Down at the coast in Kilifi County in a unique village called Kibokoni, we find Esther, who undertook a PhD in fisheries management. Her project was on the very promising integrated multi-tropic aquaculture practice. So it's a practice where, where, which involves capturing of different organisms uh, in a, which have different trophic levels. They are captured in a single system. I used sea cucumber. Sea cucumber it's, a, it's one of the high value organisms that have been recognized in the world today. So if I, I, I thought now, coming up with such an organism, trying it in pond systems, that, like, because this is the first, we have, it has never been tried in ponds anywhere. We have, a, we have tr tried it in the ponds. It has worked, it, we have got good results after four, 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 a period of four months, a period of, of, of six months with the second trial. And uh, it's something that the community now can start working up with.
From Kilifi, we head to Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology in Kiambu County, where Ruth investigated the processing suitability, post-harvest storage effects, and the value addition of Irish potato varieties. I have a passion in value addition, and it's always a pleasure and a joy to see the farmers change their lives when they come to us and we impart some knowledge in them. These are climate smart uh, varieties, meaning they're not adversely affected by climate change. When it comes to the issues of uh, processing and value addition, these var varieties are suitable. So if our farmers were able to adopt these technologies and they run with it, we are going to have uh, worthy farmers we are going to have our income generation. Our youths are going to be employed in these processing units. And we'll be talking of our profitability of our farming activities. Under the KSAP scholarship program, a total of 172 students were sponsored. They included 99 master's degrees and 73 PhDs distributed across the country in 21 universities. Under Component 3, the project has been sponsoring the development of agro-weather forecasting and marketing information systems and dissemination tools within six thematic areas. Climate change science and modeling, disaster risk management, agrometeorology, computer science, agricultural statistics, and business information systems. Mostly in Component 3, we had students that uh, were we're looking at uh, mostly uh, issues of socioeconomics, looking at uh, how um, farmers can package themselves, uh, themselves to now have uh, resilience to climate change. And they were also looking at um, aspects that, can, uh, um, that farmers can do that can res um, reduce greenhouse gases in, in, in the atmosphere. One of the benefiting researchers under Component 3 is Kobia Musheke, who works for Egerton University's engineering department as a technologist. My interest is linking uh, our technology, uh, engineering technology, to agriculture. In future, uh, we, are, we, are, uh, we are going to use technology to harness uh, a lot of agricultural productivities. So in uh, my area of research, I was uh, interested in uh, increasing the number of BAs. Uh, Ani is uh, one of the, the products that is highly marketable. The challenge in that field is that uh, one beehive would require to have uh, a queen. And if that doesn't have a queen, then the bee, uh, the beehive will not exist, or a colony of bees will not exist. I came up with the idea of uh, making uh, an incubator which can arch the, the queen in a period of 17 days. From Edgerton University, we head down to Isiolo County, where Philip Okello, who works for the Kenya Meteorological Department, carried out research on drought early warning systems. If we can come up with this uh, a drought tool, prediction tool, that can predict drought in, let's say, in 30 years before it's occurring, then people can plan their resilience mechanisms so that it can reduce the effects of drought prior to its occurrence. At the time of production of this video, more than 80% of sponsored students had successfully finished their studies, adding valuable knowledge, skills and technologies on climate smart agriculture. They are now ambassadors of the Kenya Climate Smart Agriculture Project approaches in the various organizations that they work for, strengthening institutional capacities to respond to climate change globally, now and long into the future. The great success of this program can be largely attributed to the dedication of the students, support from the implementing organizations, and a robust monitoring and evaluation mechanism.
one of the things that we are actually in our training select committee, we did a background check on the training needs from the various organizations, be it CARO, be it the ministry, be it the, the universities, be it the counties. So we are training on actual capacity or skills that are needed at the county level in the project and beyond the project. Remember, climate change issues are continuing. We are talking of climate smart agriculture, you can't put a time frame to it. It's beyond the project period. So the skills we are training now are going to benefit not only the project as for now, but the county as a whole going forward. And therefore for us, we are looking at a 100% transition. Because even just five students not completing, the impact of the money we will have lost will be more than seven million. And therefore we are not leaving any student behind. We have put all our heads together and the efforts and any support that we can be able to give the student to ensure that they are able to complete within the stipulated period because the project has a life. First of all, I want to appreciate what KSAP has done. KSAP has really done a good job. I'm so thankful for the scholarship. I'm really very grateful for KSAP. Uh, we hope that uh, there will be KSAP part two. I have to appreciate the KSAP group for finding uh, it's able enough to fund us in this project. They made my dream come true. Yeah.